So, welcome guys, Batman here. So for now on, I'm going to basically, if you guys ever do a, a recommendation, if you're asking to request me to react to something, or to make a video on something, whatever the case may be, for now on, that will be the priority in content. Obviously to keep you guys entertained, to keep you rolled in, and to make sure we continue to grow in a positive direction for our YouTube channel, you name it, that's what I'm gonna do. So shout out to Weeaboo Warrior. Um, he actually commented out on one of my videos. I, I don't remember which one it was. I'll have to go back. But um, he asked me to check out his tier list. Uh, what's it called? I think it was on our Jay the Great tier list that I was uh, co-hosting with. Um, and me and him were just kind of vibing together, whatever. And Jay was making his tier list. And I was just kind of giving different perspectives of how you could argue, whatever. And for the most part, it was just mainly Jay's skill, right? He commented, I believe, in that video, actually, in particular. And basically wanted me to react to his tier list. Um, I'm assuming this is the video. Um, so it's about an hour and 29 minutes long, so it's not too long. So we'll probably do two parts of this reaction series. If I'm really feeling it. I'll just do it all in one video, but we'll see. Probably just do two parts um, for the sake of time and me, if I am having a pause throughout or whatever for certain reasons to give my takes or personal, um, you know, uh, subjective views and whatnot. But um, we're going to check it out. The title of the video is Ultimate Naruto Character Strength and um, Power Tier List. And so basically... We'll check it out, see what happens. I, I will be honest with you guys. I, I, I kind of spoiled it a little bit to where I saw like the first two minutes. And it was really interesting, unique, uh, like beginning as well. It was something that kind of caught me off guard. I was expecting more of like a the traditional, you know, like tier list scaling videos that are normally made. Like like what Swag did, you know, Swag Kage. So, um, but we're going to get into it. Uh, appreciate you uh, commenting, checking out um, some of my vids as well, Weeaboo Warrior. And uh, let's see what he's got. Let's do it. Rip out souls. Re oh wow, this is way, way above. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So many tier lists, no jutsu. Hello, my fellow One way to do it is and welcome to my Naruto strength and power tier list. In this video, I will be ranking every relevant canon Naruto character from the beginning of the series all the way to the end of Shippuden. Now, that's probably Forward dumb to say, but I'm assuming that's what he looks like. And I give respect for that, because a lot of people nowadays don't be showing their face, whether they have insecurity or whatever the case may be, you know, but I'm just saying, I always give respect for that in a sense, because, you know, you know, you gotta give respect to it. You know, they're showing their face, that they're clearly got nothing to hide, whatever. The whole nine yards, you know? ...characters will be saved for another list. And I didn't have much of a choice, as this list is already packed to the brim with how many characters I yeah. tried to cram into what it. What the fuck? To be more Why is he not to like that, bro? What's happening? ...specific. This list is ranking the Naruto characters in order of oh what I deem to be more likely to win in a fair fight, based off my meticulous information gathering. Going all out is my weeaboo way. So I reread the entire manga, taking notes to try and make the most accurate and complete Naruto strength ranking tier list that will ever hit the internet. Since okay. the manga is the original work that came from Kishimoto, that is my main reference for this list. But I also used some anime scenes in the official data books to help piece information together when the manga didn't provide quite enough evidence to go off of. Okay. Characters in the same tier are roughly in the same ballpark when it comes to combat ability, and the ones further to the left are the ones I think have the edge. First up I'm summoning the Genin tier. As the title suggests, this tier is full of Genin. Attack power wise, they should be able to destroy I'm gonna walls. I'm going to pause it right there and then that's already a good start. I'm going to give him credit for that because a lot of people like are annoying with that. And what I mean is the fact that he's put into consideration all different forms and lines of scaling, like the manga, the anime, etc. That's actually a really good thing because once again, for one, you can be able to easily prove uh, it to all be canon and to be valid forms of scaling. Two, there are certain points where the manga doesn't do enough. Three, okay, there are also certain points where the anime actually goes along with the correct line of scaling of things. So, due to whether multiple feats or statements, etc., etc. So, that's really good that he's approaching it that way because if you just stick mainly manga only, there's only so much you can do with that. And that can also change the scaling in certain directions, if that makes sense. So, just want to uh, say that out small buildings. And movement speed wise, they should all be less than supersonic, as Dosu implied his supersonic attacks were faster than Weighted Lee, who would easily be near the top of this tier. Sakura from part 1 is easily the weakest name Genin, and I'm not just saying that because she's a Sasuke sucking leech. She has excellent chakra control, is good at breaking out of Genjutsu, and gave the Sound Ninja a bit of trouble with her substitution Jutsu trick, so she isn't all bad. 
But she did need saving from the sound ninja. I'm a little worried so, from all this anime because you know how YouTube is with me, guys. They do not like me. <laughs> They're probably gonna hit me with that big fat copyright, you know? So she still falls below them. Part 1 Eno was almost dead even with Sakura, and their fight ended in a draw. But she actually would have won with her mind transfer jutsu if it wasn't for Sakura having her special inner voice and Naruto calling out to her. Yeah. Part hey. Fuck out of here, Ads. Part 1 Ten Ten is such a joke that she got off panel stomped by Tamari in the manga. Their fight was shown in the anime, but all she did was throw a bunch of ninja tools and got stomped. Yeah. I put her above Sakura and Eno due to her having more experience, as well as higher data book stats. And I'm not really sure if Sakura and Eno can get around that much ninja weapons being spammed at them. But Tenten is honestly a great contender for weakest name Genin. Misumi was one of the sound ninja in Kabuto's- That's another thing I do like what he's doing so far, is that he's showing the data book stats. That's really important to extrapolate from, because a lot of people ignore that. Okay, and now I'm just gonna say like I've said it a million times in all my other videos, I do feel like when it comes to of the data book stats that it, it more than likely not a 10 times is referring to their base stats and stuff like that, not to their final form transformations or whatever. Um, you know, but overall, like that is good that he's putting that in there because a lot of people just ignore that. I mean, they just don't give a damn, you know, so. ...team during the tuning exams. He had his body modified so that he could dislocate all of his joints and manipulate them with his chakra. With this ability, he can wrap around his opponents like a snake and snap their neck. You can argue he blitzed Conqueror, but Conqueror may have let him do that so he can set up his puppet trap. In close range. So, so far this list is pretty good. Sakura, Eno, um, the only, the only thing that I do feel like it can be debatable is Ten Ten being above these two dinglings because these, um, what's it called? Or at least most definitely the dude that fought the, the fatigue nerf Sasuke basically in a sense. Um, so you could probably say that as well. And then as for, and oh, that's another thing. And technically she also scales to Tamari as well. Because she did fight Tamari and forced her to use her third star. Just saying. Um, and we do know Tamari can deal with people easily like Weighted Lee and react to his attacks and everything, you name it. So, and Weighted Lee would stomp on these people. That he has in the beginning of the list would fucking stomp. Arguably he not says the only exception due to her feats and everything against Neji. But, um... But yeah, but wait till they would just shit on these people. You know what I mean? So, you can technically be able to upscale her in that sense, and she could be more higher, but it's not the end of the world where she's put out. I'm just saying, you could definitely be able to say 10 10 could be way higher. And then, not only that, like, she does have some form of relativity to her team in a sense. Like, she's always training with Neji and, and helping him, you know, whatnot, and, you know, and is able to collaborate together as a team as well with Lee and Neji. So, you have that too. And they were kind of like, the getting that were kind of ahead of the game to where they were already qualified and ready to go to participate, but they were actually hold back for another year because Guy wanted them to be even better. And then they, they were eventually allowed to, to participate in the next training exams and go from there. And they were just way ahead of the table. They were, they were you know, they were just built different, you know, um, way more, basically way more stronger and better if we're comparing over to like team seven and stuff like that, you know? So that's kind of what you're working with. But I just kind of just wanted to put that out there. And she probably beats the three below him. But Ten Ten might take him out if she keeps her distance. Yeah. Okay, Yoroi so was the other that. member on Kabuto's team, and he seemed a bit more impressive than his other glasses-wearing counterpart due to the fact he gave Sasuke some major trouble, and has the power to drain Chakra. So he would just drain Misumi if he grabbed onto him. Sasuke was heavily nerfed in that fight due to the curse mark, so he can't That's really- That's good that he said that. Okay, how about to say? <laughs> scale higher than this. In the anime, he does come back stronger and seems a bit above end of part one Shino. So at oh. that point, he would either be around the peak of Genin tier or the bottom of Chunin tier. Part one Hinata has- Okay, so he eventually brings up a filler fight. Interesting. The Byakugan, which allows her to see all around her and even through objects, leaving her with virtually no blind spot. She also has the Gentle Fist, which is said to be the strongest taijutsu in the leaf and can bypass an enemy's outer defense and destroy their internals via severing their chakra network. With these abilities, she should be able to defeat any of the characters below her, except maybe Ten Ten if she keeps her distance. Yeah, I'm about to say. It may seem like she kept up with okay, Neji. Okay, so he's being goaded so far. He is acknowledging that Ten Ten could get the Ws over these characters, so that's that's good. Um, but he still has a lower, and that's fine. That's understandable. Um, so like, I like I do like that. Um, and then another thing too, I gotta give him a shout out too. Him including filler anime as well for on scaling is fucking goaded. 
Like, oh my god, somebody that finally has brain cells, bro. <laughs> like, once again, if it doesn't have any forms of contradictions or it doesn't do anything to the point where it's like clearly just not a valid form of scaling, might as well include it, right? It's there for a reason, you know? Well, but he was likely holding back on her and was clearly unimpressed by her abilities and actually completely blitzed her at the beginning of their fight, cutting off all her chakra points without her even realizing it. She also has the second lowest total data book stats out of anyone. Though her ability of coordination stat, which I've seen translated as total or composite ability, was a 3, which is the same as tuning Arkshino's, Shikamaru's, and Sasuke's, which would make her high gaining tier. So if you want to use higher end scaling for her and go off that total ability ranking, and try to argue Neji was going all out on her and didn't completely blitz and stomp her, she should arguably be above tuning Arc Kiba as he was only given a total ability of 2, and was comparable to tuning Arc based Naruto, who was also given a total ability of 2 and was getting blitzed by Neji. Keen is the female member of the Sound Ninja Trio. She throws out needles with strings attached to them so she can pull them back and penetrate her foe. She was able to land this move on Shikamaru, as well as dodge a Shadow Possession Jutsu, but she ended up losing this fight due to Shikamaru tricking her into knocking herself out. She and her teammates were fine after a surprise leap hurricane to the face from Weighted Lee. Zaku is one of her Sound Team members and one-shot her when he was possessed by Ino. He boasts the power of shooting supersonic blasts that can shatter boulders and the speed to react to Curse Mark Sasuke's attack as well as blitz in front of Sakura's throwing stars to knock them back. He straight up beat Sakura, forcing her to use her mouth on a man that wasn't Sasuke, and Ino Shikacho had to step in to save her. That's another thing too, I do think Ten Tang would be able to deal with these people as well. Um, you know, like, I'm just saying, like, I don't see why not, because of her skill into Tamara and everything, she would just be over- Like, the fact that Tamara is all the way up there, and way above- Like, you get what I'm saying, so you do the correlation, but if you don't want to grant that, that's fine. And you can kind of just keep it this way. But I do think Ten Ten will wipe the floor of most of these people, though. I'm just saying, you know. Around that point in time, that was the only, probably the only point in time Ten Ten was relevant in any sense. Uh, besides of her eventually using, like, the six path tools and fucking, and the war arc, you know? So. War ads, fuck you. Kiba and Akamaru during the tuning exams were able to push Naruto to his limit were clearly faster than him, and would have actually won if Naruto didn't fart in Kiba's face. Yep. However, Naruto was nerfed due to Orochimaru's seal on him, yep. and Kiba took a military ration pill that doubled his chakra. So yep. I personally put Naruto during that fight right above Man him. Man is spitting facts! <laughs> Choji during the tuning exams is people, actually A lot of people, like I'm just saying, but a lot of people actually do not acknowledge that either of Naruto being nerfed as well in that fight. <laughs> Crash. Having the lowest total stats of the series and getting dizzy after one human boulder. He's honestly another strong contender for the weakest name Genin. However, he improves a lot by the Sasuke retrieval arc, and even Kiba himself at the time admits he has more destructive power than him. Yep. And Choji backs this up by breaking through Jirobo's wall, which Kiba and Akamaru couldn't do even while hopped up on pills. Yep. Considering both Kiba and Choji attack by slamming themselves into their opponent, retrieval arc Choji should come out the victor over tuning arc Kiba. The next spot represents two different Rain Ninja from the tuning yeah, exams. I say, I think if, it, if it's the Choji against Kiba, like the preliminary, I think Kiba has it because of the speed advantage and everything. There's just nothing he could do. Um, but Retrieval, probably, uh, probably could pull it off. Um, you know, has more destructive power. Now, what I will say, though, the Kiba and the Retrieval arc is no joke, too. He's fighting against Saikon, whatever, you name it. And then it can also do that like that big, uh, you know, twin-headed transformation. And if that is going against Choji, I don't, I'm sorry. Choji's not dealing with that. Like, he had more destructive power against the base, um, you know, or with, like, the pills in them in, like, their normal form rotation, but not their full fucking double head transformation. You know what I mean? And I do think that would fuck him up. And Choji did fight the weakest of the Sound 4, while Kiba fights the strongest of the Sound 4, at least stated by the manga, but in the anime, the way it's stated, and you name it, etc., is that they think they're the strongest there, blah, blah, and that even Orochimaru... And Kabuto were like roasting them about it, and you know, and etc. etc. So, uh, Saikon's actually not the strongest, but and there's plenty of feeds and and etc. and other statements to extrapolate that they're all in a similar ballpark, and it mainly just boils down to their abilities in jutsu. Um, they and there's a certain things they specialize more than in comparison to each other, and that's basically all it is with the sound four. But either way, what's it called? Uh, I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. I mean, um, it's interesting, definitely could be uh, really interesting and debatable when it comes to Choji and Kiba. Um, but I'm assuming he's also just referring to base stats and not giving, like, Choji, like, the red pills either. I don't know. Um, but obviously, like, red pill Choji probably would shit on Kiba. Um, but if it comes to, like, just normal stats and everything, that Kiba actually would win due to his final form. So. 
are worth noting. The first one is Aboro, who was the one who surprised attacked Naruto when he was going to the bathroom, and his team was also the one who ganged up on Team 7 and Kabuto right at the end of the second exam. He was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sasuke, and even got the edge over him at one point, though Sasuke gave him an opening when he threw a kunai to Naruto, and he wasn't using a Sharingan at that point. He was also able to create a bunch of non-tangible clones, and hide in the ground to surprise attack his enemy. It's actually not true. Uh, he fought Sasuke in the beginning, and Sasuke was using his shotting gun. They were actually going blow for blow, and then eventually Sasuke is able to get the get the opportunity and hit him with like a kind of like kind of off guard in a sense. Um, he just didn't expect him to use the shocker to like gravitate a kunai and then throw it with his fucking foot and surprise him. But regardless if you think it's off guard or if he just got speed blitz at that moment because of him applying shocker to the kunai, I don't care. Um, but Sasuke still wins though. I mean, Sasuke's clearly above him still, but he does scale to Sasuke. And he does use shotting them. Shigure, who is the one pictured in the tier list, was the elite Genin that Hidden Rain sent to increase their dignity, so he automatically scales above Aboro. He has the ability to rain down 1,000 needles that can home in on their target, leaving no gaps or blind spots. They have the piercing power to penetrate 5mm thick tempered steel. Damn. Considering he's an elite Genin and Kiba seem to admit inferiority to him, this spot seems fair. He could possibly be higher as his technique seems pretty difficult for anyone in this tier besides Tamari or Zaku to counter, but he was blitzed and crushed by Gara's sand, while Weighted Lee was able to avoid it for a bit. So characters like Dosu who could keep up with Weighted Lee should be fast- Um... Let me see... So... That dude is a really interesting guy, like... He's strong, don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? But like... I don't know, bro. Like, Choji, I could see him probably beating him. Um, if we're talking with Tree Vark Choji, I, then no. Um, Kiba, if it's like... That can probably go either way, but then then again, with Kiba getting a speed increase in him and blah, 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 especially if it's a Trevor, he'd beat him up. Um, Zaku, that could maybe go either way, but probably to the, the, the Rain dude. Hinata would shit on him. Um... Everyone else I really don't care too much for, but but he's an interesting guy. I will say that. Um, is, he's very, very interesting. Um, but like, he just doesn't really have anything. That's the problem. Like, he just kind of gets shit on by Gar. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. You know, so, like, we can only really extrapolate his abilities and then compare his abilities to the rest of the people and then what they can do and you name it. You know, so he's an interesting character. He could beat a, a majority of versions of, like, the lower versions of him. But once they get their high peak versions, I don't think he's fucking with that. Um... And that's just basically what you're working with. Enough to deal with him before he sends out his needle attack. I don't Dosu think he beats Ten Ten either. He has a powerful sound jutsu that allowed him to stomp Junin Exams Choji and mess up Weighted Lee and Kabuto. Junin Exams Shikamaru and Tamari had a really close match, with Shikamaru managing to outsmart and shadow possess her. But he admitted he used up too much chakra and was out of time. At this point in the series, he doesn't really have any offensive moves, which really limits him. Shikamaru ended up being promoted to tuning picture? after this exam, so anyone from him up could easily be argued as low tuning tier. And this is further corroborated by the fact that Shikamaru almost beat 8 sound tuning at once, though he had to set them up to accomplish this. Tamari goes right above him since she won their fight, and her wind attacks are powerful with a wide range, making her an extremely difficult opponent for any of these Genin to deal with. Just ask Ten Ten. She was able to casually block weighted Lee and said he wasn't that fast. On the other hand, she said Shikamaru was pretty quick after he dodged her on two separate occasions. So that's more proof Shikamaru isn't just smart, but a capable fighter. Yep. And could arguably even beat Weighted Lee. Yeah. Con Mr. Marvel Wait, is going to receive everything he needs. Thank now, if Lee goes first gate or Weighted, then no. Hell no. But wait, just Weighted Lee alone? Absolutely. With those two feats. Conqueror should be relative to his younger sister and has the exact same total stat number as her. Okay. He utilizes yeah, puppets fair. and poison, and only a small whiff of his poison smoke bomb can end in his opponent's defeat. Shino defeated an injured Zaku by inserting his beetles into his bodily orifices, and he defeated Konkuro's puppets in the same manner. He went down at the end of the fight along with Konkuro, so they're about as close to equal as you can get. Sasuke before the Chidori training is the very definition of an elite Genin. He graduated at the top of his class, which should put him above Shino and the others. He's skilled in fire style jutsu, being able to perform the fireball jutsu, which Kakashi thought a Genin shouldn't have the chakra to perform. And his Sharingan allows him to analyze and copy his enemy's techniques, as well as allow him to perceive incoming attacks better. Yeah. They even allowed him to track Haku using his ice mirrors. 
During the bell training, he was good enough to where Kakashi couldn't read his book like he did with Naruto and Sakura, and Sasuke even managed to touch one of the bells. At the beginning of the Land of Waves arc, he kept up the tuning rank Demon Brothers who previously completed an A-rank mission according to the data books. Sasuke was blitzed and stomped by a Zabuza water clone, but after training for a week he was able to reverse the results and blitz and stomp multiple of Zabuza's clones, which were stated to have one-tenth of the original's power. Yep. He was also clearly stated and shown to be faster than Haku when not in his ice mirrors, and was able to track Orochimaru's movements, even striking along a path Orochimaru himself didn't see. His striking power was enough to one-shot a building-sized bear, so if you combine that with his skill, powerful jutsu, and Sharingan, I think he deserves to be at the top of this tier. Okay, so we have one problem. The reason why Sasuke is not at the top, because if he's using the beginning Sasuke, Land of the Waves, and all the way to the preliminary, that Sasuke got shitted on by Weighted Lee. So he would actually be way lower, okay? Um, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, he would be way lower than that. Um, if you want to say he beats Kiba, fine. Choji, fine. All the other people, fine. Hinata, that's debatable. Um, especially with how she performed against Neji. Um, I think Hinata would just take that because of that. Uh, then Ten Ten, she more than likely would lose if you're just comparing only abilities and blah, blah, blah. But then again, she has the scaling with Tamari. So Ten Ten actually probably beats that Sasuke as well. And she also has some form of relativity in a sense to Lee and Neji. Um, then you have uh, obviously Tamari who can deal with weighted Lee. So Tamari would actually beat up that Sasuke as well and bully him. What's up, Snowhawk? And Conqueror, same thing, right? And then Shino, if we're just talking early Shino, then yeah, he probably gets beat up. Sure, fine, I don't care. Um, if we're talking like towards final shooting exam, Shino definitely would also beat up this, this Sasuke. So I'm just saying, like early Sasuke, he would get beat up. You know what I mean? Um, but if he's talking about Sasuke overall, like with Shidori, Dan, blah, blah, the whole nine then yeah, obviously, Sasuke would win. Summoning in the tuning tier, these characters are all at least confirmed tuning level. Their attack power should at least be building level, and their speed is surpassing sound. Sitting at the bottom is Mizuki. He was a traitorous tuning who almost killed Aruka, but he only ever had that chance due to Aruka jumping in front of his attacks to save Naruto. In the anime, he comes- Holy shit! Oh, hang on. So, hang on a minute. Damn! Ibazu! That man, low! Um, wait. I could be wrong, but was it Ibazu uh, a Joni? Am I, am I wrong about that? If he's Joni, he definitely slams a lot of these people. You know what I mean? Um, I don't remember him being a shooting. I could have sworn he was stated to be an elite Joni. And to train elite ninja. But anyways. Um, okay, so now I see what he's doing. He's adding the, the different forms. Like the twin-headed Kiba. So that makes... Okay, so that would make sense why he put Kiba there. So that actually does make sense. Okay, I agree. I see what he's doing now. Um, interesting, okay. Da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to continue to hear him out because he's clearly doing different forms of the characters. He's not like doing, you know, um, like their max forms or whatever, you name it, etc. The whole nine yards. So let me just keep hearing him out. Back after getting yoked in prison and takes a potion from Orochimaru that turns him into a tiger man. In that form, he'd probably be near the peak of tuning tier or the bottom of low joning tier. I put Aruka higher than Mizuki since he only lost to him due to protecting Naruto. His stats improved from the first to second data book, and in the anime, he's able to hold his own against the prison-hearted Mizuki. Okay. The data book gives him a total ability of 4, which is above any of the characters in the tier below. His total stats are vastly above theirs as well, and he's completed 12 A-ranked missions, so even though he doesn't really have any feats, he should be above all of them. Ebisu is a special Jonin, which is basically a rank for ninja who are Jonin level in a certain skill, but not in all aspects, so they weren't given the full rank of Jonin. He implied he was better than Mizuki and wasn't afraid of Naruto's Shadow Clone technique, which backs this up. He has completed one A-rank mission and his total stats are above Aruka's from the first data book, but below Aruka's from the second data book. Yeah, see, he is a Jonin, so I don't know about all that. I, uh, I disagree with that. Um, uh, well, I watch uh, Bored to Litter, new, unfortunately, not, not tonight's stream. Um, I might do that uh, either this Sunday or Monday or Tuesday coming up eventually, because uh, this way Loki is able to be there because I do know he enjoys uh, those. 
Or maybe if I have time tomorrow, I'll watch it. But it's a possibility to tomorrow, not tonight. Um, yeah, with him being a joining and everything, I'm sorry, I just don't. I, I'm not too sure about that one. Like, I know he doesn't really have really any feats. He kind of gets no diff by Jiraiya. And then, like, it was implied to show that he could deal with all Naruto's clones. And that's, you know, and then even Kakashi kind of further establishes that he's like, you know, he's an elite joining, whatever. Specializes in training the elite ninja, etc. the whole nine yards, whatever. So, like, you know, and then eventually in Chaputin, at least, we do see him, like, fighting against, you know, a path of pain. So, like, I don't know. Like, I don't think he would be, he'd be tuning, you know, level or struggling with Gennings and shit. Though he didn't have any stats given in the second data book for himself. In the anime, he fought back decently well against one of the paths of pain, which solidifies his placement above Aruka for me. This next spot represents Kiba during the Sasuke retrieval arc. Even when using his military rations to double his chakra, it was clearly below the sound 4, even while they're in base. But with his two-headed wolf technique, his power is easily low joning tier, being able to split stage 2 Sakon and Ukon from each other, and dent a Rashomon gate. Yeah, it's crazy. The reason he's stuck in this spot is that he can only attack in that form twice, so as long as the move is countered, any of the characters above him should manage to win. Shikamaru in the retrieval arc gained the ability to suffocate his opponents with his shadows, which eliminates his weakness of not being able to directly hurt his opponents when shadow possessing them. He was able to push Tayuya to her second state, which could arguably put him above the Sound 4's Curse Mark Stage 1 state. However, he was incapacitated by base Jirobo and Kitamaru, and Tayuya was a good matchup for him since she was a long distance fighter who had an attack pattern that could be analyzed. Homebag has dishes you can mix, match, and. Part 1 Lee with his weights on would be around the top of the Genin tier, as he could beat pre tuning exam Sasuke, and Ten Ten said he could have defeated the Sound Ninja if he was serious. But when the weights come off, his speed skyrockets to the point Gara can't keep up with him, and Choji's eyes can't even keep track of him anymore. He doesn't have enough striking power to take Gara down in base, but with the gates, he was able to damage him, and would have won if he had mastery of this power. But the strain on his body was too much, allowing Gara to escape his lotus and left him open after his fifth gate attack. If he was able to use the fourth and fifth gate without any drawbacks, I would put him in the low Jonin tier. And even as is, he might be able to defeat some of the characters in that tier, but just one slip up could spell his doom. Joning tier. Damn, Broccoli's a joning? I don't know about him being a joning. Don't get me wrong, he's really freaking strong with fifth gate if you name it, but for joning? I don't know about that one. I would also like to mention his strength while using the Drunken Fist, as his unpredictability allowed him to land some hits on a sick Kimi Maro. But he did no damage, needed saving from Gara, and was directly stated to be weaker than he was during the tuning exams. So I think overall, Lee is limited to this tier. Base Gara during the tuning exams is right above him due to defeating. So, unless I'm tripping, okay, if that's weightless Lee, then, like, everybody else, sure, yeah, he would absolutely stomp. Um, and uh, everybody above. I guess, yeah, that's fine, whatever, like, um, to compare to Weightless. But if it's Lee at his full power, Lee is above all these fucking people. I'm sorry. Except for Gar. Gar is the one exception. And technically Naruto because of the cube, QB, but if we were just going on the, the base, then there you go, he's still over. But I'm just saying, putting that out there. Him. Even as a little kid, he stopped multiple assassination attempts against him. We'll, we'll, and we'll get back to Lee, but I, I gotta see if he's doing the next formally or something, I don't know. Um, but I think that was only weightless because he started talking about the gate versions and drunken fist so like If that applies obviously he should be way higher But if that doesn't and that, that's he's only referring to that state as weightless then that makes sense He killed his uncle Yashimaru who is an Anbu and the right-hand man of the fourth Kaze Kage However, Yashimaru had reasons to hold back as it was revealed He didn't actually hate Gara, but his total stats are still low and would place him in the tuning range it was stated Gara's record of clearing the second stage of the tuning exams was beyond what any tuning could do, so you could easily argue he's Jonin level in some regards, especially in his defense. Sasuke also said his stealth skills rivaled Kakashi's. However, his reaction speed isn't that great, as base Lee and Sasuke after his Chidori training were repeatedly blitzing him. Sasuke managed to pierce him with Chidori and forced him to transform, and that version of Sasuke was stated to be tuning level, so overall this version of Gara should be limited to tuning level. After partially transforming, he's clearly above Sasuke, and would possibly even be in the low Jonin tier, but definitely below Naruto using Kuruma Chakra, as he was forced to go into full Shukaka mode by him. 
In full Shukaku mode, he gains a large portion of the Tailed Beast's power. And when Shukaku's consciousness takes over, he becomes even stronger, being able to overpower Gamabunta, which should place him at a bare minimum low Kage tier. Neji during the tuning exams was stated to be tuning level in the data book, as well as being given a total ability score of 4, which is above tuning arc Sasuke's and Lee's, who both had a 3. His total stats are higher than theirs and Gara's. Yep. He can stop his opponent from using their chakra by accurately striking their chakra points, and can use rotation to defend himself at all angles while striking back at anything that touches it. Tenten even describes this defense as being greater than Gara's. Lee was going to use the 8 inner gates technique to defeat him, which means he should be above weightless base Lee, who was able to outspeed Gara. Yep. Neji's speed stat is equal to post Chidori training tuning arc Sasuke's, who could also speed blitz and tag Gara. This means Neji should be able to land hits on Gara, and his gentle fist technique should counter his sand armor. His Byakugan will be able to see sand coming from any direction, and he did better against base Naruto than even the partially transformed Gara. Yeah. Konohamaru during Pain's Assault on the Leaf mastered the use of Shadow Clones and the Rasengan, and was able to take out one of the Paths of Pain with them. He won with Trickery, and Nagato was likely highly underestimating him due to him being a child, plus he was focused on five other bodies at once. So while this is impressive, I don't think I can confidently put Konohamaru much higher. I think putting him right next to end of part 1 base Naruto seems fair. Naruto at the beginning of part 1 would be all the way at the bottom of the list, but after learning the Shadow Clone technique, he likely already surpassed many of the bodies. Konohamaru above... Neji? I don't know about that. Bottom tier Genin. It was clear throughout the Land of Waves arc he was above Sakura. Angara? And he made mm. I guess Gar, I could see, yeah, if Konohamaru was able to do Shadow Clones of Rising on, yeah, I could see that. He managed to come up with a plan to force Zabuza to release Kakashi with the help of Sasuke. During the tuning exams, he would go right above Kiba, as he was able to win while nerfed by Orochimaru Seal, and trained to become even stronger during the third portion of the exam. After that, he learned the A rank Jutsu the Rasengan, which allowed him enough attack power to mortally wound even high Jonin level characters like Kabuto. By the end of part 1, he was able to fight evenly with base 2 Tomoe Sasuke. The data book gives end of part 1 Sasuke higher stats than tuning exams Neji. Most importantly, his speed stats higher, and his Chidori is potent enough to go through most defenses, including Gara's strongest stand defense at the time. So he would likely be able to land a hit on Neji, finishing him off. Naruto scales above Neji due to being equal with that Sasuke, having an equal speed stat as Neji, having the Rasengan which can finish him off, and his Shadow Clones which can give him an opportunity to land it. The Sound 4 and their base are above base Sasuke. Okay, so we'll talk about Neji because I think he's going to talk about a second form of Neji. Um, if not, I will talk about Neji and Lee to say why they would be way more higher and shit on Final Valley Sasuke as well, and you name it. Um, but we'll get to that in a bit. They were able to beat him up. They did gang up on him, but it was made pretty clear base Akon could solo him. And Sasuke's attacks barely did any damage to him. Sasuke in his Curse Mark Stage 1 state was able to easily defeat the Sound Ninjas during the tuning exams, and could dodge their supersonic attacks. He was able to easily defeat base Naruto in their battle at the Final Valley. Curse Mark State 1 Sakon easily repelled one of his attacks, so he and the other- He wasn't able to easily beat Naruto, I disagree on that. He fought Naruto, they both did really well. Manga, they had feats against each other, anime shows it further, and while Naruto's having a mental crisis, he can still perceive Sasuke and react to him, and he's kind of just thinking about their friendship, you name it. And he's still reacting in a way. And then eventually, like, like they both clash and equal out their rising on a Chidori thing, too. And he had to utilize CM1 and create, utilize multiple Jutsus in order to create an opening. So it definitely wasn't easily. I don't know about that one, but uh, he does at least beat uh, base Naruto. Um, don't, like, you could still maybe argue that, like, if Naruto's over here replicating, like, 2,000 fucking Shadow Clones and know that would not have happened... Um, and he would have probably, you know, got overwhelmed, whatever. Um, or maybe somehow Sasuke could deal with it by using Firestar or some shit, I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, he did he did struggle against base Naruto. And they were kind of equal, they were basically equal to each other in a sense. And then it just basically moved on from there, you know. Other Sound 4 in their first Curse Mark state should be above him at that point. Though you could argue after Sasuke evolved his Curse Mark to the second stage, his first stage Curse Mark also became stronger. Due to how easily he beat base Naruto, that version of Curse Mark Sasuke might be low down in the tier above. Part 2 Ino was fast enough to keep up with her team to dodge an attack from Kakuzu and Edo Asuma, as well as fight back against Asuma while possessing Choji and multiple white Zetsu. Even though she isn't suited for 1v1 combat, as her mind transfer jutsu is hard to land, and any damage that happens to the body she's possessing is transferred to her, I believe these feats should be enough to show she outspeeds any of the characters below her. After the war, she was able to fight back a bit against the mind-controlled Sai, which would further back her placement being at least this high. 
Her father Inoichi is likely at least relative to her, but he's a Jonin, so he could be argued into the low Jonin tier. He also has the Mind Destruction Jutsu, which can control his opponents without becoming unconscious himself. Ino is also shown to be capable of this Jutsu in the anime. Part 2 Tenten could keep up with her team and make a 30% Kasame clone fall back with one of her bombs. She was able to dodge attacks from Kakuzu, so speed-wise she should be relative to Ino. But Tenten has more offensive capabilities, so I put her higher. The data book does say her prowess even has the Akatsuki dumbfounded, but I'm just going to assume they were dumbfounded by how bad it was. At the peak of the Junin tier are Zumo and Kotetsu. When fighting together, these two fight at a Jonin level, being able to give Kakuzu a little trouble in their first encounter, and surprise attacked and kept up with him in their second. By themselves, they aren't quite as deadly, and Kotetsu got defeated by the true peak of Junin tier, Condor the Ostrich. This man brought up the ostrich. Summoning the- Alright, so... The low Jonin tier, this tier- Okay, so, let me see. So if we're talking about Eno and Ten Ten and whatnot, I'm sorry, but Ten Ten in the war is over here fighting against very strong people and using the six path tools. She would shit on a lot of these fucking characters, um, especially for part one Naruto. She put in Ten Ten. Uh, she just has blatant scaling. Um, so you just have all that. Uh, Eno, same thing like you said, she would also shit. I don't think they're tuning. I would think they would definitely be joning, especially if we're doing like their highest forms, you know what I mean? Um, and then you kind of just have that, whatever. But either way, it's, it's what you're working with. Um, the other two, I guess it's fine to put over. It's not, I'm not going to sweat it. Okay, so, yeah, let's just keep watching from here, though. It's for characters who just barely scrape into the Jonin level. Based off multiple feats, these characters should be able to blow away multiple city blocks, or even small oh, towns. Oh, that's another thing. The sound forward CM1 um, were able to also be relative to the Jonin. They were able to fight. I mean, they literally charge each other, whatever. They probably start getting overwhelmed and then have to go to CM2. So I'm just saying, since they do have relativity to the Jonin, I think they should also be more higher, too and they're likely at least hypersonic in speed. Some attacks in the data books are compared to lightning, but I think when you look at the context and how many times it's said, I think it's pretty clear they're hyperboles. Hayate Gecko is the big- Um, so like, let me see, okay, up there above them, cool. Yeah, I'm just checking something, okay. So, so the sound for the CM1 curse mark, it's not horrible where you placed them, I guess. Now, I will say this, though. If they're going against uh, Ten Ten and Eno, I don't, I don't know about that one, bro. If they're going to be losing to them or losing to the other two tuning, you know, um, just saying, especially if you analyze all their feats in the work and everything in base and uh, with CM1, but it's whatever very definition of a low Jonin, with his only feat in the manga being him landing a hit on Baki before being killed. Yeah. He has the lowest total stats out of any Jonin, and hasn't completed any S rank missions. Though he has completed 96 A rank missions, which significantly dwarfs any of the characters in the Chunin tier. According to the data book, he's technically a special Jonin, so it makes sense he's on the weaker side. And as if to make fun of him, the data book calls him one of the best ninja in the league. Baki does hype him up a bit, so he is at least good for his age. Yugao Uzuki is his lover and an Anbu Black Ops member. In the anime, she got the better of Edo Hayate. This spot's probably around where most of the fodder Anbu members would sit. C is a sensory ninja who has the ability to create flashbang-like jutsu to blind his opponents. He can also use medical ninjutsu. Ao is a Jonin of the Mist that has a Byakugan. He apparently fought against Shisui in the past, but we don't really know how well he did or how old Shisui was, so it doesn't really scale him anywhere. Like C, he's also a sensory type. And combining that with his Byakugan, I think he can counter C's flashbang ability. Hinoko was talented enough to be picked up by the- So we do know this uh, definitively though, that he does not scale to Shishui. And the reason why is because when he actually had an interaction with Shishui um, older, and he just uh, concedes. Like he's like, yeah, no, it's Shishui, we can't fuck with him, we need to run. Because Shishui had to run on side order as well. So just saying like he doesn't scale to him at all.
Yanbu right after she graduated the academy. The and hand. he was already highly regarded by the Yanbu at the and age of 14. And I think it's also in the manga too. She can accurately shoot out homing chakra needles which allow her to easily defeat enemy ninja. Shikamaru was able to blitz past her, so he should be above her. And Tamari was clearly above her as well. The next two aren't on the list, but they're from the same anime arc based on a Shikamaru novel. Ro is another member of the Yanbu, but he would be weaker than Hinoko, as his ability of copying chakra signatures isn't very useful in combat. He did use it to take Choji off guard and temporarily choke him, but he was quickly overpowered. Shikamaru also got the better of him while he was brainwashed. Gengo uses his words to instill Genjutsu onto others, and managed to brainwash Hinoko. Damn, him with all this Naruto music in the background? Bro, I'm gonna get fucked up with copyright. <laughs> Ro, and even Sai. But his only combat feat is losing to Shikamaru. Karui is a tuning of the class. Alright, let me pause this real quick. Okay. I'm just kind of looking around overall. Okay. All right, so his list is not horrible. Okay, so that that's the only problem that I have though. Once we get further up, um, I absolutely do not think Naruto and Kyuubi and Sasuke with three Tomo is low joning. I do not believe that at all. They're tuning, but they're not uh, joning. Um, and I'll eventually explain that in a bit. But I just kind of want to put that out there. And if he doesn't show Lee in, which I, I don't think anyone would put Lee in the mid joning, but if Lee doesn't show up in the mid joning either, then I am going to bring Lee up, um, and say why he would scale over a lot of these people. Um, I'll say where he falls basically, but. Um, cause Lee, if, if that's Lee with all five gates, he should not be that low. Um, he should definitely be above, um, all Sasuke's, um, and Naruto as well due to feats and statements. So, and data book stats too. Out who studied directly under Killer B. She was able to fight alongside Omoe against Naruto, Sakura, and Sai as well as defeat an unknown amount of white Zetsu with the other shinobi fighting alongside her. The data book says she has the speed of lightning, but this could easily be a hyperbole. Karin before unlocking the full power of her ceiling chains was strong enough to keep Orochimaru's experiments in line, and constantly punched Sugetsu's head off, though it didn't really do anything to him. She's a sensory ninja with the power to heal others as well as herself, and has a strong physical constitution as an Uzumaki. In the anime, she gets the better of Sugetsu once with one of her chains, so if she uses one of those, she could easily be higher on this list. Konkuro during the Sasuke retrieval arc killed Sakon and Ukon. However, they were already fatigued and Ukon was controlling the main body, which he wasn't used to, so it's hard to scale him based off that feat. I believe he and should be comparable Konkuro's to his- not low Joni. What the fuck? She put in, okay, it's fine. But, part one? Uh, no, he's tuning. His younger sister, who has lower total stats than him, and she definitely belongs in this tier. So Konkuro should as well. He has also completed one S rank mission, which backs him up being low Jonin tier. Jorobo in his second state is 10 times stronger than his base, who is already able to lift up and throw a giant boulder, as well as temporarily trap the leaf ninja in his chakra siphoning earth jutsu. In his second state, he was able to one shot the yellow pill enhanced giant Choji. In the anime, him and the other Sound 4 were confirmed to be Jonin level, and the data books say he and the other Sound 4 have completed one S rank mission. Which backs them See, up in the low. And that's what I'm saying. If he's considering anime as well as evidence, which is good, right? Then the jo uh, these joning are going to be way fucking higher. Way higher. Like, they are not losing to fucking QB Naruto, 3 Tomo Sasuke, uh, things like that, whatever. Like, that's just not at all the case. Um, so, I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. But. Joning tier. He's confirmed on multiple occasions to be the weakest of the Sound 4, which is why he's below- And I mind you, the Sound 4 and the War Arc are at full power, but obviously Edo's, so they have a slight nerf close to the original power, state of verbatim. The Sound 4 and the Retrieval Arc were nerfed and fatigued, they were not at full power, that's what a lot of people forget as well. 
the other members of his team. Tayuya goes above him because of that. She has the power to control three summons that create a chakra devouring mist. She also has sound genjutsu that can paralyze anyone who hears it. Usually this type of character wouldn't be that great in close range, but she was physically powerful enough to resist the shadow possession jutsu even while at point blank range, and would have killed Chikamaru if Tamari didn't show up. Tamari from the Sasuke retrieval arc is next, as she defeated Tayuya. And unlike with Conqueror's yeah, opponent- Tamari's also not Joning level either. Um, she's tuning level, but not, she has nothing to signify that she's a Joning. There's nothing remotely. Tayuya's chakra was stated to have just grown right before now, Tamari showed up. Now retrieval or Gara, he's definitely Joning. Not to mention Tamari has one of the best destructive feats in part 1 with her summoning blade dance jutsu, which killed Tayuya and destroyed a large portion of the force they were in. Because of this, she has a chance of defeating some of the characters above her in this tier as long as she keeps her distance. She was also shown clearly reacting to the speed of sound when she deflected Tayuya's sound genjutsu. Part 2 he not only just achieved the ability to do 64 palms in the war, while well, Neji could do it since the tuning exams, and her beginning of part 2 stats are barely above his. So at the beginning of Japuden, she would arguably be right next to that version of Neji in the tier below. In the pain arc, she used the ability Twin Lion Fists, and made Pain take steps back. And in the war arc, she beat back a Tentails clone. She also has the ability of Air Palm, but since she just achieved 64 palms and hasn't even shown the capability of rotation, I put her right below end of part 1 Neji. Neji from the Sasuke Retrieval arc defeated so, Kitomaru- She put in Hinata should be way up there. ...in his second state. However, his abilities specifically countered Kitomaru's, and Neji thought nobody but him could take him. He also said Kitomaru was the strongest person he ever faced, and that Naruto was the strongest he faced before him, which directly scales Kitomaru above Naruto when he used Kurama Chakra against Neji in the tuning exams. Neji pretty much flat out admitted Kitomaru was stronger than him twice, and Kitomaru said he played too much, so that's why I put him one spot above. He has the ability to create webs strong enough to withstand two elephants pulling apart on him, or Naruto trying to cut them with a kunai and they even stop two elite Anbu members. He can also secrete a hardened substance that can protect his body and be turned into weapons. He can shoot them out as arrows at lightning speeds according to the data book, and even if that's a hyperbole, the destructive power is still amazing, and he's accurate up to hundreds of meters away. If he's within 50 meters, he can attach a chakra thread to his arrow and guide it to his target. If these powers weren't enough, he can also summon a horde of spiders. Akamaru sensed he was far stronger than Jirobo, and it's hard to imagine he isn't the strongest of the Sound 4, but Sakon was directly stated to be the strongest by Kabuto. An argument can be made against this as Kitamaru says Neji was the first one to drive him this far since Kimimaro, which would imply Sakon hasn't unless they've never fought before. However, Sakon shares his body with Ukon, his older brother, essentially making him two for the price of one. So it's possible Kitamaru is the strongest individual- So, Kitamaru is definitely the strongest of the Sound 4, um, but the problem with that, that statement he just showed from the manga, it's actually not true. So the anime actually states it. Um, let me actually pull it up so I can say it verbatim. Pull it up for you guys real quick. Yeah, so I'm reading it right now, but in the in the animated state of verbatim, uh, where Rochimaru and Kabuto are roasting the Sound 4 members and wondering what's taking them so long, and basically what they say is um, that, you know, basically talking about Saikon and the Flute Girl, that he thinks he's the strongest of the four, so he shows off when he loses his temper is Saikon. And then Orochimaru says, Ataya has a personality that's neck and neck with Saikon, Basically similar, um, and that's basically what you have. So even Orochimaru and Kabuto do not even think that they're the strongest. They're basically, in, in a nutshell, saying like it, court, enabling the notion that, and making fun of them in a way that the fact that they believe that they are the strongest and that they could potentially be the ones making the mission the long, like real, uh, take it forever due to like their personality and, and, and tendencies that they have. Um, and then Jirobo, they also talk a little bit about him and the other dude. So. It's actually not stated verbatim that Psychon is the strongest. And then not only that, if you analyze the feats and the statements, the Sound of Four are constantly showing uh, relativity bare minimum or equal equal feats, in a sense. You know what I mean? Against the Joning, um, against uh, Wild Nerf to Fatigue, against the Konoha 12, basically. Um, and then, literally, that's what you're working with. 
Um, Jirobo was stated to be the weakest. That is always the same anime and manga, and the feats and everything makes sense, you name it. Um, Kim R was stated to be the, uh, uh, says Neneji's strong, whatever, blah, blah, fights Neneji, whatever. You have that whole correlation, but because of his abilities and jutsu, that's why he would be the strongest. Saikon's a close range fighter, so he would be at a severe disadvantage and he wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, so overall, like, I'm just putting that out there. Um, Saikon's not the strongest. Um, you know, that's just kind of what you're working with. And it basically it is what it is. And also the flute girl, because she's a range, you name it, fighter and combat, etc. She could also be able to counter Saikon. In a sense now, Saikon could technically get out of it if he's able to inflict damage in his body. You know, whatever. Um, he could do that. You know, maybe the other one can break the chakra somehow. So maybe they could somehow counter the Genjutsu. And if they could do that and get in close range, then he can win. But that can go either way. But I'm not fine. That's fine. So but I just want to put that out there real quick. Um, that's basically all you're working with. And, you know, that's it. So. And Sakon and Ukon together are the strongest. Since they literally come attached at the hip, I place them as if they're one singular entity. They have the ability to summon a Rashomon gate. And Ukon can enter his opponent's body and kill them from the inside. If Konkuro didn't come to save them, Kiba and Akamaru would have been killed by them. Part 1 Naruto accessing Kuruma Chakra vastly amplifies his power. In Chapter 1, it is likely he accessed some of it to take down Mizuki, which would already put him in tuning tier. He later clearly accessed it after he thought Sasuke was killed by Haku, and it was stated his chakra was greater than even Kakashi's, and he was able to stomp Haku. Based off those statements, he could be argued higher than this, but there's more to winning a fight than just having more chakra, and Haku was going easy on him. In the Forest of Death, he managed to deck and stop a giant snake summon. He later uses Kuruma's chakra to defeat Neji in the tuning exams, so he would be somewhere above him, but below Kitamaru due to the Neji statement I brought up earlier. He uses it again in the Gara fight, and quickly forces Gara to go into his full Shukaku mode, so he was stronger than partially transformed Gara at that time. He managed to summon Gamabunta and defeat the Gara controlled Shukaku, so as long as Gamabunta listens to him, Naruto could actually be argued as high as the low Kage tier. In the final valley fight with Sasuke, once he used Kurama Chakra, he started whooping Sasuke's emo butt. <laughs> After unlocking the third Tomoe in his Sharingan, Sasuke started to be able to track Kurama and enhance Naruto's speed, and was able to beat him back and force him into his one-tailed state. He might not have the raw power of Naruto accessing Kurama Chakra, but if Naruto can't tag him, that doesn't really matter. Okay. Summoning in the mid joning tier, these characters- Okay, so... Here's where... Things are interesting. So with the low joining. So yeah, and Lee's not popping up at all. So okay, so here's the problem. I'm gonna first talk about Lee. So Lee, okay, would shit at all these people that he just basically talked about. Um especially if he immediately goes into the fifth gate. It is basically a speed blitz and one shot, that's it, GG's. And the reason why is we're just gonna make this really short and simple. Um, you know. Especially to Tomo Sasuke as well. Uh, Sasuke was only relative to Lee's weightless speed. He wasn't even at Lee's weightless speed. And that's with Tutomo and everything. Um, and then with the Shador, we know it's like a small speed amp or whatever. But it's not a massive one due to the feats that we have. You know, him doing it against Naruto. Um, and et cetera, et cetera. And also being able to be seen the whole nine yards. And it's, it's stated twice so you could easily dodge a beeline attack. Or sidestep or whatever or counter it so you have all that so overall with everything like lee basically is already uh so bare minimum with this should or you could say maybe it's equal to weightless lee whatever great it's fine okay then with lee with the first gate alone he gets five times faster and then with the fifth gate he's way more vastly more faster and, and more powerful right so with lee basically in a nutshell he would just scale way over these characters naruto in his QB state, okay, mind you, fighting against Kimimaru, okay, literally was being destroyed, no diffed, 2,000 plus uh, QBM clones with a chocolate cloak, right? Couldn't do anything. Lee comes, speed blitzes him, lands a hit on him, in base, sir, mind you. Then Lee uh, uses drunken fist, landing multiple blows. He also landed four blows in base with weightless speed as well, okay, on Kimimaru. Uh, Kimimaru is forced to go CM1 against... First Gate Lee and Drunken Fist Lee. So you have all that correlation and scaling. That Lee would absolutely stomp the oblivion of two Tomo Sasuke with his curse mark and Kumi Naruto. He just has the feats. You know what I mean? He has the feats and it's as simple as that. And mind you, that was a Lee that was 
weaker and less sharper than the one uh, fighting guard in the tuning exams. So if you do the math, a primely as well, and with all five fucking gates, you name it, he would absolutely shit on them. I do think QB Naruto and three Tomo Sasuke, at least bare minimum, well not three Tomo, but same two Sasuke, bare minimum scales to first gate Lee. I think that's the highest and safest you can argue. Um, and the reason why is because of the feats that we have. Okay, you have basically everything that was shown with the Kim Mara fight, right? Correlate that all to, to Lee. You can also correlate Lee's scaling to Neji. Do the math, connect the dots, right? So, and basically, like, that's what you're working with. When Naruto gets his one tail state, like I said a million times, like, sure, he has more chakra, whatever, but since he has shit chakra control, and we do know that you need a great chakra control in order to be able to make full use of, like, your, basically your chakra, right? Um, that it's not going to be, like, a crazy or massive amp, in a sense. You know what I mean? It just, it just won't do anything. Um, and that's just basically what you're working with. So, with, Q, with the, the QB chakra, at least... With the one tail in QB, it's the same fucking power level. And the reason why we know that is because the feats are there. Sasuke can react to QB Naruto. Sasuke could also react to one tail Naruto. He just couldn't react to like the, the branching. Because basically what makes one tail Naruto more strong is because of chakra branching and the unique abilities that it has and perks that the other QB Naruto doesn't have. So overall, like he has the same scaling basically because his chakra control is shit. Same thing for Sasuke. Sasuke, like, is over here reacting with three Tomo to one tail Naruto, doing, you know, doing decently well, whatever. Even with two Tomo, he was reacting to QB Naruto to a sense, but just getting overpowered. And then once Naruto amps up his speed, he's able to kind of shit on him and then uh, subdue him, okay? So, like, even that particular Sasuke, but regardless of that, all right, with ten times more power, right, and a Shidori amp, he's still equal to Naruto. To the same Naruto. So... And that also makes sense because Sasuke also has shit chakra control, which is also stated in the beginning of Naruto, and stated that Sakura had the best chakra control, and she was the closest to reaching Kage tier. Kakashi says that bare minimum. And then Kakashi says, but with their vast and large amount of chakra, if they're able to get the same chakra lo control level as Sakura, or decent enough, you know, they can be able to surpass her, basically. So because their chakra control and everything is so shit, that's why it's just not a significant amp. Now, obviously, when they get older and stuff like that, that's where it can be a significant amp and actually be, be really useful and exploited to a full use. So, with all the feats that we have, basically, if Neji is over here shitting on the Spider-Man dude and making him concede that close combat is just not an option, okay, in base, remind you, with the Brachygon, and all the other Genin got fucking shitted on, no diff, basically, in a sense, okay, including Naruto as well, okay, and you name it. There you go, connect all the dots. And Neji was stated to scale bare minimum to gate two of Lee. Because it, it, it would take Lee to go to the third gate, stated verbatim, in order to be able to beat Neji. And obviously above further, he would be able to beat him too. So the fact that Neji can scale to the second gate, basically, would obviously have him over Naruto and Sasuke, which makes sense because he has the feats. Base Naruto gets absolutely slammed, okay, by Jirobo and Sp Spider-Man, dude. Okay, then you see the feats of QB Naruto against Kim Maru. Then you see the feats with Lee and everything and whatnot. Do, connect all the dots. You have Neji who scales to gate two. He would also beat that Naruto as well. Same thing for the uh, for the one tail Naruto. Same thing for Sasuke as with the with a CM2 transformation. It sounds crazy, but that's what you're doing. If you analyze all their feats and the data book stats and him with the whole nine yards, it's just greater. Like that's just what you're working with. You know what I mean? They have the feats and evidence for it. So that's just blatantly not the case at all. Um, and the whole thing with, like, I think you said with Neji fighting against, like, QB, uh, Cloak Naruto or whatever, you know, that's impressive in Naruto in a sense, but what he was also forgetting is that Neji's technically mentally nerfed in a sense to where, like, he's, like, completely, like, what the fuck is happening? How, he, how where do you get all this chakra from? He's stronger. Now he's getting conflicted and confused that his opponent is actually, like, contesting against him, whatever. And even, like... Towards the end of the battle, he actually hesitates. And he's like, oh no, I need to start the rotation. And is late on starting the rotation. So he's not able to fully reflect all the damage. And basically takes uh, a certain amount of damage just like Naruto does. And then basically gets up. And that's when Naruto catches him off guard. Because at that point in time, he was very prideful and arrogant. Underestimating his opponents. And Naruto was able to beat him due to him being off guard. He would have lost a fight. Neji was bullying him the entire time. So... Overall, like with all that, and we do know like the, the Neji in the, the, the final training exams and the retrieval Neji, 
The retrieval on Edgy is stronger than the one in the tuning exams as well. Slightly. The, his data book stats do increase, which he did show that, but I'm going to put that out there too. So that's just kind of what you're working with. And then with the retrieval on Edgy, he's no fucking joke. You know what I mean? We see his feats and everything, okay? And then we analyze everything Naruto can do with his QB chakra, you name it. So if you analyze all those feats, that Lee should be way above. If anything, if... And he even said Lee could also should be low Joan and yeah, he has him all the way down there. So Lee should be like all the way above and be shitting on all these people. I'm sorry, like that's just not the case at all. There's no way. Um, and that's just generally what you're working with. Um, but you know, that's it. I mean, Lee would just basically speed blitz and kill all these people with, with his Lotus AP. Um, and then Neji, same thing. So I'm just kind of putting that out there. So that, that's all I have to say on that. And most importantly, they're just not joning. They don't have any feats to extrapolate or prove or show that they're joning level. They don't. They just don't have anything like that. Um, they're tuning level, but they're not joning level. So I kind of wanted to put that out there too. Um, but other than that, that's the only really kinks that I can, or in the armor that I can kind of like see that I just don't fully agree with. Um, everything else is fine for the most part. Um, what's a little bit crazy is how one to Naruto and CM2 Sasuke is over here beating all these other Jonin. Um, but, you know, like, Shippuden level characters, that's just insane to me. But overall, that's just kind of what you work with. You know what I mean? Um, and that's basically it. So. They're your average Jonin level fighters. They should at least have the power to destroy towns. So now that we're to mid Jonin, I'm actually going to end this part right here. Actually, I'll keep it going a little bit more. And shouldn't be entering double digit mock speeds. Raido and Genma are in this tier, as even though they lost to the Sound 4, it was a 2v4, and they pushed them to their second state and still gave them trouble. Not to mention this was after they just finished a mission and were low on Chakra. Yep. So one on one, they should be above Spin any of the facts. Sound 4. Genma's total databook stats are higher than the Sound 4's, and he's completed 74 A rank missions and 2 S rank missions. He also stopped one of their kunai by spitting his toothpick. It's a ch Aoba can call on crows to annoy and hinder the vision of his opponents, and he can send his chakra through strings attached to kunai to paralyze his foes. Unluckily for him, the only person we ever see him do it to can absorb chakra. In the anime, he was able to fight hand to hand with Kakuzu for a bit. Anko was Orochimaru's pupil and has many of his abilities. She was able to fight against a clone of him, who she almost accidentally committed a double suicide jutsu with. In the anime, she put up a small fight against Orochimaru and fused Kabuto. She's completed 89 A rank and 2 S rank missions. Abiki is virtually featless in the manga, but he has decent stats in the data book, is called one of the most experienced and skilled among the Leaf, and has completed 79 A rank and 3 S rank missions. In the anime, he shows the capability to summon powerful torture devices against one of the Paths of Pain. Abiki and the previous four characters were actually special Jonin, and the next five are true Jonin, which is part of the reason why they're higher. Samui is the Jonin in charge of Omoe and Karui, and she's stated to be a valuable and capable person. Her brother Atsui and her were up at the front with Darui fighting against Kinkaku and Ginkaku, so they're likely respectable in strength, but they're sealed pretty quickly by the ninja brothers. Akatsuchi could create golems from his mouth that could block explosions from Daedara. In the data book, he stated to be the stone's war experienced pride of power and has unrivaled physical strength, but his attack feats are lacking and the best he's done is destroy a white Zetsu, so while he could easily be higher, I put him here due to a lack of combat feats. Baki was the Sand Sibling's Jonin instructor, and was able to defeat Hayate pretty quickly. He's completed 106 A rank and 11 S rank missions. His total data book stats are equal with the next two Jonin. Shizune has poison needles and can spit poison gas that can kill an opponent with one whiff. Kabuto considered her skilled. Kurenai is a Genjutsu master who was able to put Itachi and Kasame under Genjutsu, and then break out of Itachi's Genjutsu after he reversed it. She has completed 138 A rank and 14 S ranked missions. She was a newbie Jonin in part 1, so it makes sense for her to be below the likes of Asuma and Kakashi. Part 2 Shino was able to destroy a Jubi clone, and in the anime he was able to defeat Tarune with the help of a Kurma cloaked Naruto clone. His chakra devouring beetles are extremely useful and help them decipher Obito's Kamui ability. Part 1 Choji after eating the green pill was able to overpower base Jirobo but after was overpowered by Curse Mark Stage 1, so he would be right between those forms in the tuning tier. After eating the yellow pill, he surpassed Curse Mark Stage 1 by a wide margin, but got one shot by Stage 2, so he would either go at the peak of tuning tier or low down in the low joning tier. Once ingesting the red pill, his power explodes by- Okay, so... <clears throat> um, 
So yeah, so Choji being above Naruto and three Tomo Sasuke, I don't know about that. And being a mid joning, I, I, that either. Once again, he's fighting against a nerf fatigue Jurobo. And two, uh, that Choji, like, sure, you can get like way more Chalker, right? But once again, if your Chalker control isn't the best, it's you're not going to be able to make full use of it. And we just don't really have enough to really fully conclude and deduce that Red Pill Choji is mid joning at that um, and beating joning level people. I just, I don't know about all that one. Um, and especially to beat three Tomo Sasuke and QB Naruto. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, that's, it's weird. Um, if you want to say like he's like low joining level, I guess I can maybe find like if you really want to give Choji the benefit of the doubt. But at the end of the day, like, it's just, we don't really have a lot. I mean, he only beats Jirobo, a fatigue nerf one at that. And that's all he has. You know what I mean? There's really nothing else. So, um, and he's like, like I said, he's just, he's losing to a lot of these characters. Um, like he probably would lose to, uh, like if it comes to any of like the sound, edit, the sound four and whatnot, like Spider-Man guy probably takes it. You know what I mean, unless it's like a meet, like actually no, if he's already in red pill state. So he could probably be able to beat all the other sound four because of fatigue. But if it's their prime versions, no, he's getting shitted on. Um, he just doesn't, he's, he's not joining at this point yet. And then when it comes to like, uh, Lee gets shitted on by him. Neji would also shit on this Choji. He fights someone that's stronger. Okay. And beats him in close combat. So Neji would deal with him, react, you name it, etc. Um, he has rotation as well. And Choji can only be in that form for like a tiny bit. He, he does not have long at all. So you have that too. Um, but yeah, no, Choji, that's just, I don't know about all that. Like, he's not beating Shippuden Shino. He's not beating all these other Shippuden characters. He's not beating all these other Jonin characters. That's just wild. I don't know about all that. I'll just say that. Um, as for the Jonin so far, it's not the end of the world how he has it. You could argue in many ways of, like, all the Jonings in comparison during part one of, like, where they actually scale and who's above who, whatever. That's a whole other can of worms. I'm not really going to get into that. But for the most part, it's fine. Um... Uh, 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 Sonata's apprentice, she should be way lower though. She got beat up by a uh, heavily nerfed Kabuto who couldn't even use like his full body and also his right hand was disabled and then she lost the fight and got beat up. So I don't know about that one. That was a little weird for her placement, but it's fine. Like he does acknowledge that she's good, but once he gets serious and everything, she just can't contend with him at all. And mind you, it was like a crippled severely crippled weakened Kabuto basically um but there's context and everything that's all I'm saying but yeah so that's all I'll say for like I said for any of all the Shippuden characters like they should just be way above you know it's just time you know I mean they have all the scaling they're just way over at that point um Gara is uh he's eventually getting to him but I'll give my thoughts on that but once we finish this mid then we'll conclude this video here for part one and we'll eventually release the second part if it's necessary to release the third part of the video, we will do that as well. But it should only be two parts. By a hundredfold, and he stomps second state Jirobo. I put him on this spot on the list because nobody below him has the raw power feats to contend with him. Though Kurenai's Genjutsu, Shizune's Poison, and Shino's Insects all certainly have a chance of taking him out. He would also probably be somewhere around this tier for most of part two, until he unlocked his butterfly form without the need to pop pills. Part 2 Kiba with his three-headed wolf technique was able to slice through a large amount of Jubi clones, which is actually extremely impressive considering how Shino and Hinata only dealt with one at a time, and his performance is much closer to the combined might of Inoshika Cho. However, he barely has any feats in Part 2, and one of his only other feats is just him embarrassing himself by missing Obito and almost knocking himself out. So his attack power in his three-headed wolf form could very well be a tier up, but his overall combat ability is hard to prove, so I kept him in this tier. Garo in the Sasuke retrieval arc was stated to be stronger than he was in the tuning exams, and he proved it by showing he was superior to Curse Mark State 1 Kimimaro. He can cover a forest with his sand tsunami and bury his opponents 200 meters under the ground. One-tailed Naruto in Part 1 was completely overpowering 3 Tomoe Sharingan Sasuke, even with Curse Mark State 1, and was almost equal with State 2. State 2 Curse Mark Sasuke is right above him since he won that fight. He has the Heaven Curse Mark, which is the opposite of Kimimaro's Earth Curse Mark, and Kabuto wondered which one of them was- So, I'll say this. The Gara and everything, he would absolutely shit on all these people. 
Okay. He's on a whole other level. Once again, he's fighting Kim Amaru out of all people. He would absolutely dog wash CMT Sasuke, One Tail Naruto, um, you name it. Like, that's just not even a fucking contest. I'm sorry. Not at all. Um, and if we're also obviously including Shikaku in that too, even harder. Um, but he just has blatant scaling to Kim Amaru, and yeah, they would get shit on. Once again, we saw how Naruto performed against Kim Amaru and everything. That's what you have. And the feats that he has in the Sasuke fight, you name it, further solidifies the fact that it's not a massive amp. Because um, once again, his chakra control is shit. So yeah, Gar would absolutely slam all these people. Like that's just insane. For like part one scaling wise, when it comes to like Shippuden and everything, he probably starts getting beat up by a lot of people. Um, but you know, that's just kind of what you're working with. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's a little crazy uh, for Gar to be losing to One Tail Naruto and CM2 Sasuke. That, that's really rough. Um, but for the most part, all of it's pretty good. You know what I mean? Um, you know, everything. Gar would beat all the rest of the people. And that's just kind of what you're working with. And yeah, and I do agree with the Sasuke thing. Not Sasuke, uh, Sakura placement too. She would definitely, like, she put in Sakura. Yeah, she would beat that Gar. Um, just basically be fast enough and just one shot him and bam, he's, he's done. Um, but yeah, that's what you're uh, basically working with for the most part. It was insane that he had Choji all the way that high um, to even be above three Tomo Sasuke and <laughs> QB Naruto in the, the Valley of the End. But yet, he is all the way down. Like, that was just insane to me. I don't know about all that one. And he even had Choji above Neji. Like, that was just, I'm like, what? So yeah, I don't know about all that, but Overall, that's like the only issues I have so far. Um, and then with what he's talking about right now, there's actually context to these statements. Uh, this wasn't actually being applied in a hyper-literal sense. Uh, Kabuto basically talks to Orochimaru and Lily says, I'm going to basically just convince Kimaru to like to, to participate in the mission and help whatever. So he just starts talking, you know, whatever, and trying to basically bait Kimaru and persuade him to participate and help in the mission to retrieve Sasuke. And that's why he's saying all this. And uh, he actually already showed the statement, but it was stated verbatim that Sasuke's curse mark is equal, basically, would be equal to the other sound four members, you name it. And then also upon the feats that we have and everything, the feats all also support that notion. So all this is just bullshit. Uh, Sasuke and Kimara do not have stronger curse marks. It's just nothing to prove that. Stronger. Kabuto is also the guy who said nobody could overcome Kimimaro. And even a sick Kimimaro would have defeated Gara if he didn't die right then and there. Yes. So Sasuke is likely above that version of Gara. Per Soaky Mountain Water Park. Yeah, so that right there makes no sense. Sasuke is not over that Gara. <laughs> Part two, Sasuke. Like, like the feats completely show that he's not over that. Like that Gara was fucking bullying Kimimaro the entire time and doesn't start getting overpowered until he goes to his CM2 state. You know what I mean? Like. And then Gar is able to like further do his techniques and beat him. So like no, like that means you're basically saying Sasuke beats Kimaru. You know like what the fuck? Like that's just crazy. Or would be able to deal with Kimaru and restrain him like Gar was doing. Like that's just insane. That Gar is insanely fucking powerful and would absolutely dog wash him. You do one fucking sand tsunami and bam, he gets grabbed and killed and done. GG. There's no durability feats, nothing. You know what I mean? Like that's just insane. Like. The only thing you could argue is, like, if Sasuke, like, does his Shidori, you know what I mean? Like, that could be able to go through. But then again, his body doesn't scale to his Shidori, you know? So that, that doesn't help either. Kuro without her mitotic regeneration technique was initially shown to be around the level of base Naruto and weaker than Kakashi during the beginning of part two. She and Naruto needed to team up on Kakashi and give him fake spoilers just to take the bells from him. In her fight against Sasori, Granny Chiyo carried her throughout most of that fight. Though by the end of it, she could start to react to Sasori. And Chiyo said she didn't really need her support anymore. But right after that, she got tagged by Sasori's attack and would have been finished by the poison if she didn't have the antidote. It's possible she reached the tier above, but she was accidentally KO'd by a shockwave from three-tailed Naruto, while Kabuto, who was directly hit by the blast, wasn't. So this leads me to believe- I could have sworn that was one-tailed Naruto, but I could be wrong. ...believe she should be here. Summoning in the high Jonin tier, these characters should all at least have the power to destroy large towns or small cities, and be comfortably in the double-digit mock range. Fu Yamanaka stated to be one of the top two best in the foundation. With the data book saying he- Alright, so we'll end this reaction video here at the high joning. Um, but for the most part, it's not too bad. I mean, there's certain uh, areas where I'm like, I'm like, eh, I don't know about all that and I have impasses with, but, um, but for the most part, it's not, it's not too bad. I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. Um, you know, and that's basically what you're working with. Um, 
There's really nothing for it really to go along on. Now, yeah, like I was just trying to see if I could find anything else. I don't know. I don't really see anything else. So that's basically it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below. Uh, I will make sure to finalize this video and uh, there'll be a part two coming out. And uh, as always, you guys take it easy and enjoy.